Now we're ready to get closer to general relativity as we look at the metric tensor and relate this to all the stuff we've been doing so far. So the first fundamental form gives us a way of calculating the lengths of paths along a surface. So this is the square of the arc length in the case of a two-dimensional surface of revolution that we already have looked at. The form is quadratic and is sometimes referred to as the fundamental quadratic form of space because of the squares. Now if we let g sub 1 1 be the coefficient in front of the first coordinate squared and g 2 2 be the coefficient in front of the second coordinate squared, we can then write this in a compact form. The s squared is g 1 1, d rho squared plus g 2 2 d phi squared. The coefficients g 1 1 and g 2 2, which refer to the first and second coordinates respectively, can be placed in a nice matrix which we can refer to as the GIJs, or the GIJ matrix. I refers to the row, and J is the column. So first row, first column. First row, second column. Second row, first column. Second row, second column. Now the diagonal, off-diagonal, the off-diagonal terms, sometimes G11, G22 refers to diagonal terms, and this is off-diagonal terms, uh, these allow for the mixing uh, cases, d rho, d phi, and d phi, d rho, and they don't appear in our, in our case here. We do not have a d phi, d rho uh, term or d rho, d phi term. In general, you could have that. So for our case, the off diagonal components are zero. So we have for g11, the 1 plus f prime squared, and for the f for the g22 the, the row squared so there's one plus f prime squared for the g11 and the g22 the uh, row squared here's a nice homework problem calculate the gaussian curvature uh, and metric actually you're going to calculate here the gaussian curvature in terms of the metric so you already know what the k is but you want to get it in terms of the g's so that's what you're going to do use our formula for the K, the uh, Gaussian curvature, that's two dimensions, two dimensional surface, and show that you get this neat formula in terms of the G's, all right? Uh, you could look at this uh, row as, you know, the square root, row is a square root of G22, two, two, so you could put a square root here, G22, two, two, but I just as well leave, leave that as a row. Later, we'll look at a more general formula. So the components of the tensor, the entry is in the matrix, and they're dependent on the coordinates that we pick, you know, whether it's Cartesian coordinates or if it should be cylindrical coordinates, you know, any kind of coordinates that you imagine. But the neat thing about the Gaussian curvature is that that's independent of the choice. That is the curvature that gives us a measure of the intrinsic property of the surface itself. Look at ds squared here in Cartesian coordinates. So it would be a dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared. This is cylind uh, This would be a spherical coordinates, spherical coordinates here. So we have Cartesian and spherical, and we wanted to demonstrate here at this point that the gij's, those components do um, come consist of components of a tensor, and the tensor is going to be a covariant tensor. Now, how do I show that? Well, let's uh, write down in general the GIJs here. This is your formula for ds squared, where this allows for cross terms, you know, like uh, here at dx, dy, or the d rho, d phi in general. And here we're going to look at another coordinate uh, system, the prime coordinate system, which has uh, dx uh, prime, you know, I, it would be equal to 1, 2, and 3. J would be equal to 1, 2, and 3. Or if you consider four dimensions, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, but here, uh, this is to consider all the possible coordinates, the differentials multiplying in terms of the line element. So now we're going to use the chain rule. Uh, the G, I, J, if we're going to look at this uh, over here, this uh, D, X, I, uh, here, what we're going to do is represent the dxi as dxi dx prime k dx prime k. So it's chain rule to re-express 
the coordinate system that are not primed in terms of the ones that are primed. So we do that here twice and uh, note that the second uh, choice here for the index always pick indices here that are different so as not to get conf confused. The i and j are fixed, i and j here, but then using this chain rule idea you have a k and l introduced. And this must equal the right hand side. So uh, the choice of the k and l uh, match the choices of the k and l on the right hand side. So that's kind of neat to see that. Then you subtract and when you subtract you have the situation where since the uh, coordinates are arbitrary and you have an equation equals zero this must vanish identically. And so when you collect the terms, you see, lo and behold, what is this? This is a tensor equation, a tensor transformation equation. So here you have uh, the primes on the bottom, and that's a KL on the bottom, and then IJ on the top there. You might remember that's our definition of a covariant transformation, tensor transformation. That's a second order because there's two covariant indices. Very, very nice to see that. Uh, here's a quick review of the Kronecker Delta. The Kronecker Delta is um, uh, Delta IJ. When I is equal to J, you get one. And when I is not equal to J, you get zero, which uh, the Cartesian metric can be written in that form. That's kind of cool. Cartesian metrics. There is a uh, Kronecker. There he is. Picture of him. And for cylindric coordinates, uh, the GIJs would be one, rho squared and one. And for spherical coordinates, you would have the one R squared, R squared, sine squared theta. Notice that all these are diagonal, kind of neat. You don't see any cross terms, like you don't see any uh, dr times d theta in the line element calculation. So very, very uh, fundamental and important stuff. And these are very, very uh, germane to general relativity's GIJs or the metric uh, tensor.